Center and now Airbnb. Mr. Hicks serves as a board member of directors for Transcon Worldwide AAB. Mr. Hicks is an alumni of Clark Atlanta University in 1988. He is also a Stanford University graduate of their business school, which he graduated there in 2016. Now for our second panelist, Mr. Dom Walker. Mr. Walker is a CAU 2011 graduate, author, Airbnb host, and commercial real estate investor specializing in out-of-state rentals. Dom, Mr. Hicks is based in Los Angeles, California, LA, with his wife, Brianna, and, da and daughter, Bailey Ray. Mr. Hicks has scaled his Midwest real estate investment portfolio to over seven figures with 17 units under management. He is focused on creating generational wealth and passive income while improving living conditions of his tenants and creating unforgettable experiences for his short-term rental guests. Understanding the importance of sharing knowledge with the Black community in 2022, this year, after securing his second commercial real estate property, he created an ebook called Don't Wait, Buy Real Estate. Don't Wait, Buy Real Estate is the blueprint to acquiring multifamily commercial real estate. Mr. Hicks shares his invaluable experiences throughout his real estate journey, highlighting his successes as well as oversights. You can find his ebook or the paperback version currently on Amazon or in the link of his Instagram bio at these with Dom. Now for our third panelist, uh, last but certainly not least, Ms. Portia Smiley. Ms. Portia Smiley is a native of Birmingham, Alabama. She is also a graduate of Clark Atlanta University, where she received her Bachelor of Arts degree in business. Since graduating, Ms. Ms. Smiley has made it her personal mission to go the extra mile for others and is passionate about helping those around her. After 10 years of working in corporate America, she took that leap of faith into pursuing real estate full time. Since then, she, she has been dedicated to make the dream of home ownership come true for all her clients and does so with honesty and integrity. Ms. Smiley became an Airbnb host in 2018 and has since then learned the good and also learned about the bad about the business. She takes pride in providing the best hands-on experience for each transaction, which helped her in becoming a super host. In her free time, Miss Smiley enjoys spending time with her family, traveling the world, and watching real estate shows on HGTV. Dedication and, and determination are the philosophies that Miss Smiley strives for in all aspects of her life. Her goal in life is to be a blessing to anyone she encounters. Now we will have Miss Lori, Dr. Lori J. Siler, the Vice President of Alumni Relations and Engagement, give us greetings. Good evening, good evening and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening. As Mr. Mitchell said, I am Lori Sadler and I have the pleasure to serve as the Vice President of Alumni Relations and Engagement. And I say that with a big warm smile because it is truly, truly my honor to serve in this capacity. I assure you as an alum and actually a two-time alum, this illustrious institution, having earned my MBA in 1992 and my doctorate in 2020, and as the proud parent of an alum, my oldest daughter graduated in the class of 2020, I assure you that I take this role very seriously and I am committed to engaging and being connected with our alumni community. Under the leadership of our fifth president, George T. Dr. George T. French Jr., we continue to expand the university's footprint, taking CAU to places and spaces we have not been before. We are moving forward with the momentum of our powerful and influential alumni community. It is the charge of our office, the Office of Alumni Relations and Engagement, to continue to amplify our legacy. And we do so this evening as we launch our new discussion series, The Panther Grind. Our intention for this series is to bring forward cutting edge topics, industry insights, and in some cases, courageous and conversations that are of high interest and high, high impact. In this series, we want to showcase the talent that is produced here at CAU by spotlighting our alums who are committed to the grind and who are making tomorrow's history today. 
We hope you enjoy the discussion, that you are challenged, and even take away nuggets that might prove helpful for you on your journey. And please feel free to share back with us how this positively impacted your grind. Again, thank you for joining us. And Anthony, I hand it back over to you. Thank you for those warm greetings, Dr. Sally. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So to break the ice, I have a few questions, all right? So the first question to get to kick off this panel discussion, for those that may not be familiar with the Airbnb concept, can you provide the background and what it is? Sure, Anthony, I'll take, I'll take that um, um, as a sort of warm up and lead in. First, I just wanna say, a uh, warm hello to everyone. Uh, so good to see everybody's faces, uh, familiar faces that I've seen here uh, as alumni. Um, I also want to call out, uh, you know, I'm, I'm incredibly humbled to, you know, on this call, sit back and listen uh, to, my, uh, to my panelists, my fellow panelists here, Dom and Portia. Wow, to hear Dom's experience, commercial, uh, real estate, eBooks, et cetera, big shout out, Portia the same. So I, I, I'm, I'm going to also be sitting back and learning here as well. But let me just say very briefly, um, for those who are not as familiar with the story around Airbnb, um, you, know, you know, what I'd say fundamentally, what you'll hear in press, and you could hear the, uh, you could read about if you Google them, is Airbnb is a short-term rental platform um, that basically serves in two-sided market. What do you look to try to place a host who want to open up their homes uh, and experiences with guests who want to travel uh, and uh, seek out some level of tourism. And they're fitting and serving in that market space and that need. Uh, but there's a more important, I think, story here. Uh, and I think it's probably relevant for this conversation that we have here tonight. And that's about how you bring uh, it, the idea of necessity and how that breeds ingenuity. And in the story for Airbnb, as I've been told from Brian, it's very simple. Back in 2007 uh, in San Francisco, uh, there was a conference going on, a design conference. Uh, and like what happens in a lot of conferences, space, hotel spaces, uh, et cetera, um, were short and, and far between. And so uh, with uh, Brian Joe, uh, who is also a co-founder, Nate is also a co-founder, uh, came up with a brilliant idea which was why don't they open up their apartment uh, for a couple of folks who are going to be at the conference. And so they did. Um, and they, uh, in, in that sort of opening up, they allowed them to stay there. They, they, they make breakfast for them, but more importantly, they make connections uh, and they began to talk and this relationship built and an idea was born. Wow, why can't we do this uh, sort of on a global scale? Uh, and through it, they've been able to upend this idea of travel and tourism and sort of the idea of the precious idea that only hotels is where you can stay. Uh, and so the company over the last 15 year, years have been growing phenomenally. We just went public about a year or so ago in the pandemic. Uh, we had some very bolsterous uh, uh, um, quarterly earnings that just came out this week. The company is healthy and doing uh, remarkably well, even in the pandemic. And so I've joined because I'm excited to see what they're going to do once we get out of this pandemic. So that's a little bit about Airbnb. And again, I'm excited to be here with you all. And also, I kind of wanted to touch on that as well. Um, Donald, you, you mentioned the connections, um, you know, specifically with Airbnb. And, you know, a lot of people just look at this from, you know, the short term rental standpoint. And I think the relationships and the connections that you make within that platform are literally priceless. Um, you know, specifically with one of my listings, you know, I had, I, you know, I get guests from overseas all the time, um, Italy, you know, China, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's one of those things where if you provide a great service, great accommodations, great recommendations, um, when you go and travel to their country, um, you can expect the same um, nine times out of 10. If they're staying in your Airbnb, um, they have multiple listings in their country as well. So, um, you know, we can speak about, you know, obviously the experience and, you know, the, the short term rental aspect about it. But there are some some great, um, you know, experiences and, and relationships that can also be made as well.
Amazing, amazing, amazing. So a following question for that would be, how did you first get started with Airbnb? Am I taking this one okay. or is this, is this directed at, uh, at Don? Anyone can answer. Yeah, I'll, I'll just go ahead and, and, and start. Um, initially, uh, back in 2017, I was able to uh, purchase my first property. Um, and uh, it, 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 it started off great. Um, this wasn't an Airbnb property. Um, you know, for, for a while, this was a long-term tenant situation. And uh, with that being said, um, I actually had a tragic event um, happen within that, that specific unit. I had a flood. Um, I had a long-term tenant being displaced. The entire unit was, um, you know, pretty much um, it needed to be reconstructed and mitigated. So um, I was a, a, a bit, um, I would say, hesitant. Um, to let another renter in there um, from a long-term standpoint. And I was at the point with the actual property where I needed to, to figure out what was next for me. Um, once I remodeled the property, I understood that, hey, short-term rentals was my next step. Um, I was developing a theme. I was developing the layout. And I really, really, um, you know, just believed um, in the platform and, and believed in myself that I can make it happen. Um, and then with that being said, in the first six months of me listing that unit on Airbnb, um, I actually doubled my volume um, from what I would see in a full year long, like a whole one year, uh, you know, lease term tenant. Um, I actually did that volume in six months. So uh, that was a key indicator for me that, you know, hey, I needed to take this serious and I needed to expand. Um, so that's actually how I got started with, with my real estate journey, specifically with Airbnb. Um, and then I, I, I moved on into seeking out a mentor as well with, with Airbnb as well. And then going into commercial real estate um, and also having Airbnb listings as well. So that, that was kind of my journey. And um, I'll just pass it over to the next panelist. All right. I guess I can go. Um... I'm Portia, by the way. And so how I got started in Airbnb is um, how I think you should get started. It's not what Dom said, you know, if you own a property or if you get permission from an apartment complex, but I have to share the very ugly side of doing it the wrong way. So about four years ago, um, you know, Airbnb has been just so hot and popular. Like everybody's talking about Airbnb, Airbnb, you need Airbnb. So I'm like, okay, well, at the time I was in corporate America and I traveled a lot on my job. So um, I would be away from my apartment for um, weeks at a time sometimes. So I'm like, you know, I'm just going to throw on an Airbnb. Um, unbeknownst to me, you're not supposed to do that without the apartment's permission. So I do not recommend just turning your apartment into an Airbnb, but if I'm going to be honest, that's what I did. So I just, um, I would leave um, for like a week at a time, but I made sure the apartment had everything it needed. And um, while I was gone, people would stay. And like Dom said, I made so much money um, in just a short amount of time without even having to own the place that I was like, this is something I definitely want to, you know, stick around and do. So, but since then, um, now I actually have uh, units where I have gone through the channels of actually getting apartment leases through corporate housing. Like I have a corporate lease with the apartment complex and I don't advertise myself. It's just the Airbnb. Um, Airbnb is just one of the platforms that I use for corporate housing, but uh, you definitely can list on more than Airbnb. This is about Airbnb, but if you're going to introduce yourself to an apartment complex, you want to just say corporate housing, corporate leasing um, and use multiple platforms and, uh, and go about doing it that way. But that was my start. Um, I'm doing it the right way now. Uh, do not recommend just throwing your apartment on Airbnb. Go through the proper channels and I'm sure we'll get into that in just a minute. Thank you. Thank you for telling us, don't do that, okay? Thank you so much. <laughs> so for my third uh, question for our icebreaker would be, what are some benefits of becoming a an Airbnb host? I know you guys talked about connections, but what are some long-term and short-term benefits of being an Airbnb host? Anyone can answer, no rush. Um, since I just finished talking and they did mention connections, um, connections is a big, big part. But for me, I'm not gonna joke and say I did this just 
you know, to have fun. I was all about gaining a passive income. Um, I wanted to make money without having to be in a place to make money. And I just saw like uh, early on that Airbnb was the way to go for that. So um, one of the major benefits is just having this money uh, collect over months for you into an account that you don't have to use, that you don't have to touch, especially if you already have another job. Um, this could be a second source of income or a third source of income. And also being in hospitality made me just a great personal host. So now when I have guests over to my place, um, people don't want to leave uh, just because I provide like a, a different level of hospitality, even with my, my family and my close friends. So those have been some of the benefits for me. Awesome. Um, you know, same on my end. Um, I would say with Airbnb, the benefit is, you know, you're seeing, you know, some weekly income versus monthly income, right? Um, you know, with long-term tenants, you're, you're you're waiting on a monthly check um, at the top of the month. And, you know, um, you are at the, the will of their income. Um, so with Airbnb, um, you're able to just subsidize, subsidize that income on a weekly basis and not be so dependent on long-term tenants. Also, another benefit is, you know, um, specifically with Airbnb, um, you're able to manage and actually keep your unit um, well kept. Um, the upkeep is a lot better than a long term tenant situation. Um, you're not in charge of how, you know, a long term tenant might live in that unit. Um, you're also not in charge of, you know, how much or how often that they clean. Um, so with Airbnb, you have uh, the autonomy to go in there really, really clean these units, um, you know, before a, a guest checks in, after they check out. And essentially that unit is actually going to be more and well-maintained um, than a long-term actual unit. So I think those are some of the key benefits, um, you know, to, to Airbnb. You know, I'll just jump in and say plus one to both what Portia said and Dom. Um, I think the benefits are, uh, actually remarkable. The first one that we talked about was there is a connection element to this, but as Portia said, um, it's about the dollars too, right? So, um, you know, I think a benefit here is the economic empowerment, all the things that Don just called out, Portia just called out in terms of the passive income that you can get second, third level passive income. But there's also another element to this from a benefits perspective. And we've talked about this um, and we've touched on it, but it's this idea of entrepreneurial sort of aspirations. If you have entrepreneurial aspirations, this is a really good way to, to, to start that. We are finding uh, a lot of hosts who leave their nine to five or their, their primary role, their jobs and then go put, buy houses and, uh, or commercial properties. And this is their business. And I, I'm astounded by, I'm like blown away and so proud and, and just, uh, I just enjoy of watching people do that. And so I think that's a, you know, that's another benefit that comes with uh, the relationship and the journey on Airbnb. I love it, I love it, I love it. So now we will go to the more personalized questions, if that's okay. So Mr. Hicks, this question is for you. How has Airbnb changed in the, in the past five years? And what do you predict will happen in the next five to 10 years? You know, I think the, the answer for me, at least what I've seen, and, and I couch this with, I've, I've been there for a year, but I've also been watching and been a part of Airbnb for the last few years. I, you know, I, I think um, with the pandemic, uh, our entire world changed, right? And so um, with it, it, it really made us as a company go back to the basics and look at how do we drive this business and make it not only something sustainable, but take it from being $100 billion to, you know, two to $300 billion. And it comes down to understanding that, folks, we are in a travel revolution. We really are. It's in fact why I came to Airbnb. I was like, wow, after the pandemic, uh, I, th th there's no whole bar for this type of a company. And so where I see uh, and what I see over the next 10 years are a blend and a transition from people going into a static work environment. I think those days are gone. I think there is going to be this blend between people and a desire between people wanting to work and live in and around the same places and or uh, try different places. And you can do all that on Airbnb. 
Um, Brian today is, you know, he's running the company going around the country and around the world uh, on Airbnbs. And so I see that type of um, trend happening and will continue over the next five to 10 years. Okay. Wow. 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 Okay. So the second question is for Mr. Walker. So we know you wrote your book, Don't Wait, Buy Real Estate. What was your inspiration? And could you tell us a little bit more about it? Sure. Uh, you know, after I would say landing my second commercial property, um, this was a nine unit building um, right outside of Chicago in the Midwest. Um, I really, really wanted to take a step back and, you know, really look at some of the accomplishments that I've had over the couple of years. And I wanted to, um, you know, communicate that to some of my peers. Uh, but in a way where I can kind of teach them and also um, give them a how-to guide on how to actually repeat the, the same process. Um, so what I what I've done is I just really created you know an ebook and you know also a paperback version on Amazon. Um, it's called Don't Wait by Real Estate, and it really focuses on you know the top five things you need to understand um, you know going into multifamily commercial real estate. Um, you need to know top, you know, the top five things that you actually need to to understand walking into this. Um, it also focuses on, hey, you know, what are you know the top five things you need to avoid, and um, it also actually touches on, hey, before I actually jumped into this business, what are the top five things that I wish I would have known um, before going into real estate, um, specifically the commercial real estate side. So I think the book is is just um, you know a, a great guide to get started. And what I'm gonna do is um, I'm just gonna actually post the link in the chat so um, people can give it a try. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Like I said, if you guys want his book, it's on Amazon and it's also in the link in his bio on Instagram also at Dom with Dom with D's. So Miss Smiley, your question will be, as a super host, first, what is a super host? And dealing with lots of people, how do you manage personal safety and do you have to in interact with guests often or all the time? Okay, so um, what is a super host? A super host is someone that has um, given outstanding hospitality over a certain amount of time. And how Airbnb rates you is based on your overall rating that, that your guests leave you. Um, they want you to be in, you know, higher than like a 4.0 rating out of five. Um, the response rate, which is very important. They take your response rate seriously. My response rate is 100%. That means I answer anyone that contacts me within 24 hours. Um, and I really don't care what time they contact me. I'm probably going to, you know, give them a response within the next hour to 45 minutes. Because why not? Everybody has their phone right in front of them all the time. So why not? Um, go ahead and just give that customer service that you would want in return. They also base it on um, the amount of stays you have. So it does take a little a, a little time to get super host. Can't just get it from like two or three stays. And then um, the cancellation rate. How often are you counseling on people? And I have zero cancellations. I've never counseled on anyone. The reason I take this so seriously is because um, like the guys have mentioned, I am one of those people that quit my job to do this full time. So I have to go above and beyond to make sure that I'm giving like people what they want or else I'm playing games. I'm playing with my own life. I, I quit a six figure job in corporate America to do this full time. So I have to take it seriously. Um, and yeah, that's what a super host is. Just basically outstanding um, hospitality and customer service. Basically, how would you want to be treated when you got to an Airbnb? And I make my clients feel like they're at home. If you go read my ratings, most people say it's like home away from home. Um, Portia has everything that you can ever need down to seasonings if you want to cook. So I have thought about everything for you once you get to my place so you don't have to do anything but relax. So that's what um, being a super host is. And then your second question was, how do I stay safe? Can you repeat the second part? Yes, ma'am. So what are your safety procedures? And do you have to, uh, I would say, interact with guests often? Okay, so my safety procedures is because most of my units are in apartment complexes, they do have to have a key fob to get into the parking garage and a key fob to get into the building. So a lot of people are happy when they hear about this because they do feel more protected. This is a gated community and they love that right off the bat. And then um, as far as my interaction and keeping myself safe, I have made this a um, 
what it, what do they call it? They call it a self check in. So basically, I don't have to be there for my guests to check in. And I do this one of two ways. I either leave a lockbox in a place where they can find it, so they have a code that they can get um, the keys to the, the building. Or if the door has a keypad, then the guests will be provided with the code for the keypad to get into the building and then the door. So I don't have to ever see my guests if I don't want to. But there have been a few instances where I would have to check in with someone if they needed something or if there was a complaint about something, then I would go to the property and I've never been to the property by myself. So whether it's my cleaner that comes with me, um, a relative or a friend, whatever, I don't go by myself. And then I just tell them, hey, you know, this is my partner or this is my cleaner or whatever, you know, but I don't go along. So that does help me, um, you know, stay safe. And as far as interactions, I talk to them daily. Um, some people want to tell me about their whole life story about why they're coming to uh, stay at my Airbnb and other people don't say anything to me at all. So I give them what they want. You know, I, I treat people like I want to be treated. If I'm engaged in a conversation, then I want somebody to engage in a conversation with me. So that's what I do with my guests. I, I give them what they want, essentially. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So the next questions would be for anybody can uh, tap in and give their insight. So my first question is, what impact has the pandemic had on the Airbnb company and for you personally? I guess I'll, I'll take a fire at this one first. Um, I would say as soon as the pandemic uh, you know, started, I would believe that was March of 2020, I would say. Um, you, what you what you what you actually had was cities actually shutting down. Um, you had counties actually shutting down, you know, clubs, bars, um, restaurants. Um, so there was nowhere for, you know, pretty much people to go and entertain. Um, just from an overall outing standpoint, everybody was pretty much on lockdown. Um, so you would think with the pandemic, um, Airbnb, you know, would actually decline in, in, in bookings because if everything's locked down, if everything is, you know, not open, um, you know, you're not getting as many travelers, right? Everybody is not traveling. There's there's not a lot of people flying into to vacation. Um, so in my situation, I actually saw a huge spike in bookings. Um, and it was just primarily due to the fact that, again, not a lot of restaurants were open, not a lot of clubs were open, not a lot of lounges were open. And with that being said, a lot of people are just looking to entertain um, and sequester themselves into a space where they just know the individuals there. Um, so I saw a huge spike in bookings, um, maybe triple the volume that I would do on an average month um, prior and pretty much prior 2020, 2020 March. And then, um, you know, from the advantage side, it was great. You know, the income was great. The passive income was amazing that month. But there was a lot of upkeep and a lot of legwork on the management side with my neighbors. Um, obviously, I was booked every single day that month, and I had to really manage that process with uh, the neighbors just being unhappy with unknown guests in the, in the community. So um, for me, the pandemic was uh, you know great financially, but it also taught me how to polish up and tighten up on my processes. Um, the pandemic didn't really affect me that much. I didn't see a spike like, um, uh, where are your Airbnbs located? No, but um, but I did see a very a high decrease either. It kind of just stayed very neutral. And now that we're coming, hopefully, prayerfully coming out of this pandemic, um, things have picked up for me. So I stay booked consistently uh, on a weekly basis. And even on the days where I don't think I'm going to get a booking out of nowhere, it just somebody instantly books the same day. Um, so I really haven't had any issues during the pandemic, thank God. You know, I, what I'd say, I, I'll answer that question both on the business level and personal level. Um, you know, I'd say from a business standpoint at Airbnb, if you read the headlines and what was reality is uh, in the early days of the pandemic, uh, like most companies, it was a shock to the system. Um, I would, you know, go as far as to say, Prior to the pandemic, Airbnb was off building and scaling in multiple different areas, thinking about other business ventures uh, along with this core business. Pandemic hit, and it was a shock to the system. As you all may know, they, from a corporate perspective, had to do a layoff, first one ever for the company. Um, but what came out of it, though, 
was um, sort of a refocus on the core business, re uh, move away from the scale, the scaling of these growth moonshot uh, ventures and focus on the core, focus on host, super host, et cetera, focus on the guests and make sure that they experience as well. And that's what turned this business around even in the pandemic and why it's thriving uh, today. You know, I actually just say from a personal standpoint, um, the pandemic uh, challenging um, probably for all of us uh, uh, in, in all the similar ways. Um, but I'd also say that from a personal, like from a father perspective and just from a human standpoint, it was, it was a godsend to be quite honest uh, to you uh, because I got a chance uh, without any excuse to just slow down and be with my family, uh, see my kids. I traveled so much and we were going so fast uh, that the pandemic gave me a chance to just pause for a moment. I don't know if I ever am going to go back to that again, the way it was prior to the pandemic. Um, and, you know, that's the silver lining that I've seen through all this devastation. Wow. Uh, great insight, guys. Great insight. Great insight. So my second question also leads to what are some common misconceptions people have about being a an Airbnb host or Airbnb in general? How can we combat these misconceptions and communicate more effectively? And I'll, I'll jump in and I'll say, you know, what we hear from hosts, and I, I'm curious to hear uh, Don and Portia's perspective on this, uh, but what we hear is, you know, just moving that, pushing that perception away of, you know, Airbnb just being this sort of low cost version to hoteling. In fact, it's, 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 it's more than that. It's what, it's what I have experienced and what a lot of guests have experienced. This is a a, a true sort of change from travel and tourism. Families need more, they need space. They want a chance to sort of get out, see things that are different. They want a chance to cook for themselves when they're traveling and all. And so that misconception that this is just so, some low rank or low budget way of replacing hotels, I think is a misconception that we've proven to be, be totally wrong. But I'm curious to have Don and Portia weigh in. Sure. Uh, from my perspective, you know, a, a lot of early Airbnb investors, or if you're just, you know, starting off in real estate and you want to get into Airbnb, um, you know, some, you know, some some misconceptions or some things that hold them back are, you know, hey, uh, you know, one is is my unit going to see the bookings that, um, you know, that I want it to see, um, and also. Um, how am I going to pre prevent these measures of, you know, large events and parties and, um, you know, just a bunch of damage to the unit? Um, how am I going to put process in place to prevent that? And I think um, with that being said, you know, there's companies out there that can add security cameras around your entire property. Um, there's companies out there that have um, noise monitor monitoring um, devices inside of the unit. So you can kind of understand if a large event is going to happen or, or if it's even taking place at, the, at that time. Um, so, you know, there's some different parameters that you can actually put inside of the unit uh, to really, really, uh, you know, streamline that process. And then also, um, you know, Airbnb, in the event that something is damaged or broken, they do have, um, you know, a, a very, a very good, you know, pretty much a claims department um, to actually reimburse you. So um, if, if that's, if you're on the call and, and if those are, you know, some of the things that, that are holding you back, uh, definitely take that step forward because, you know, hey, that's something that everybody goes through. And I just want to make sure that, you know, we're clear on that. I agree with everything you said. And I would just like to add that one another one of the misconceptions may be, um, I don't know about you guys' sphere of influence, but I cannot go a day without somebody saying, hey, I want to start an Airbnb. Hey, I want to start an Airbnb. And I just don't want people to think that this is some type of get rich quick uh, Ponzi thing that you just jump in. But it can be very profitable if you do the work and are diligent and are serious about becoming a super host and serious about um, you know, going above and beyond for your guests and putting those parameters in place to make people feel safe. It can be very profitable if you have one or two. This is just, you know, passive income. I don't recommend quitting your job. But if then you get into like three or four, or five or six or 10, you're looking at 5,000, 10,000 plus dollars a month. And that's when it becomes 
um, more lucrative. So it's not a get rich quick, but I do uh, say, you know, get into this business if you're going to be very serious about it, if you want to, you know, if you're thinking about quitting your job. Anthony, I just want to jump. What Portia is saying just resonates so well. Just, you know, huge shout out to you, Portia. That, that's real. Um, this isn't a get rich scheme, Ponzi scheme, as Portia is calling it. This is the real deal. I'll give you all some, some just quick stats, right? Like, to give you order of magnitude here. Um, hosts uh, um, have earned $150 billion, um, you know, through this Airbnb uh, relationship and exchange. 60 billion in the US alone. Six billion have been made by hosts in just the pandemic alone. Uh, when you start boiling that down, even into Atlanta um, and, and you know, in the surrounding areas, about one, one to 1 1.5 billion that's been done over the last three quarters. I mean, phenomenal earning potential through this. And it's not a get rich thing. This is people who are very serious, as Portia and Dama just called out, who want to be entrepreneurial and want to build a business and drive economic power. So um, I just I had to jump back on and just say, Portia, like plus a thousand to what you just said there. Good, good, good. So now we will go back into the more personalized questions. Um, so for Mr. Hicks, your question this round would be since you just since, since you just got got through talking, right, this question is for you right here. This question is for you right here. So. What has been your career path that led you to leadership at, uh, at this organization of Airbnb? Yeah. I know you worked at Twitter, so what, I know yeah. you also touched on it, but what really made you solidify? I'm going to do Airbnb yeah. as my career. Really quick because I, I want to hear from Dom and, and Portia because like, I'm just inspired on this call. I'll, I'll just yeah. say this, um, you know, been at Airbnb for a year. Um, uh, been in the Silicon Valley here in tech companies uh, for a while, made my career uh, in this space of technology. Um, I think the thing, the gravitational pull to Airbnb was centered on one thing for me, and it was around the mission. And this mission of bringing hosts and guests and giving people the chance to build economic power, I was like, how can I be down with that? Like I, I was, you know, for a long time in my career, Google, Facebook, uh, Amazon, et cetera, I can say really cool things uh, like was part of the first uh, teams that started some of the first well-known product, products that we have from Alexa, Kindle, um, et cetera. But I could never say that I was a part of anything that I felt proud about in terms of a mission. And to be able to step back and say, I'm helping people in any small way to try to drive economic power, I wanted to be a part of that. And so that's what led me from Twitter to Airbnb. I actually got that start uh, of thinking in uh, mission-driven work at Twitter, spending the last four and a half years, probably some of the most tumultuous four and a half years in US history, I'll just say that. Um, uh, but that's what keeps me, that was a gravitational pull. Um, and that's why I do the, the, the work that I do today. But I'm curious to hear from Dom and Portia and learn from them. Is, is the question, can you repeat the question again? So during, during your, I would say, your leadership process in your career, what made you want to actually solidify, I'm going to do rentals or Air or Airbnb? Okay, uh, yeah, I, I think I'm aligned with, with Portia on this one. Um, you know, after, um, and, and I actually still work a corporate job um, to this day. Um, you know, you, you put in so many years of working, you know, in a corporate organization. Um, it's great income, it's great benefits. Uh, but, you know, I was primarily focused on turning my earned income into passive income. Um, and I'm still doing that to this day. Uh, so uh, I've scaled all the way up to about 17 units. Um, you know, some are, you know, long term tenants. Um, you know, very few are, you know, uh, Airbnbs. But I do see the high value with Airbnb. And I know that, hey, eventually, you know, I can I can make it an, an exit. Um, from corporate America and really just pursue what I'm, I'm passionate about, uh, which mm -hmm. is multifamily real estate um, as well as Airbnb. So that's kind of like my journey along the way. Okay, and so um, what inspired me to get into Airbnb? Um, I don't wanna put a lot of fluff on this for you guys. I wanna just be transparent. <laughs> 
it was the money, okay? Um, I was on Facebook one day and this guy named Ryan, he posted that he made like $100,000 in one month. Now, I know that I can't just get an Airbnb and make $100,000 in one month, but I said to myself, I have to start somewhere, right? So um, I got into Airbnbs because um, I was only one degree of separation from Ryan. So my cousin cleans all of all 30 of Ryan's Airbnbs in Birmingham, Alabama. So I have direct access to Ryan. Um, my cousin who cleans his Airbnbs just opened up seven Airbnbs for herself. Um, the guy I was dating at the time has about six Airbnbs. So I was surrounded by all these people making this Airbnb money. And I'm like, I'm going to be a part of this puzzle. Um, so uh, the money for sure. But I have to say the reason I'm staying in Airbnb is because I love hospitality. I love making people feel like they're at home. When people come spend a night in my house, they like to take their shoes off, get comfortable. And that's how I make my Airbnb guests feel as well. So Money may be the reason I got into it, but it's turning more into a passion of seeing people or uh, just providing that type of hospitality to people. And that's what I really love about it, which makes me want to stay in it and do it even more. So that's it. Great insight, great insight, great insight. So Mr. Walker, your question for this section would be, what are the key success factors for those who are achieving success in the air in the Airbnb market? And how do you know when you are making progress? Great question. Um, I, I think, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll kind of go back to uh, some of the, the key points that Portia mentioned. You know you, you're, you're doing very, very well, um, you know, when every single review is a five-star review. Um, or when you, you reach super host status, right? Um, you want to make sure that you're catering to each individual guest, you know, like maybe like they're like they're your last, you know what I'm saying? You want to make sure that they're having a great time, uh, well accommodated, and you give them some recommendations to do in the community because at the end of the day, that review is going to sell it to the next person, right? Um, you know, one bad review on Airbnb can significantly slow some things down for you. Um, and I, I see I see Portia just nodding her head and it's and it's it's the truth. You know, you really, really need to take these reviews seriously. And if there is a, you know an issue that does come up, you need to handle it and uh, just make sure that you know it's handled correctly. Um, also, um, you know, if you're being booked two to three months out, specifically on your own listing, that's how you know that, hey, you picked a great lo location, you got some good reviews, you you're building up some steam. Um, at that point, you want you want to kind of look into your pricing because, hey, if you're being booked three months out, you, you might want to take those prices up a little bit. Um, and then and then lastly, you know, it's, it's just the feedback from the guests. A lot of time they, they actually leave a public feedback and then they can leave private. If they're leaving you a lot of private feedback and, and telling you how you know, much of a good time that they, they had at your listing, I think, you know, hey, you're, you're on to something. So um, if you could just replicate that process, again, you know, having one, two Airbnbs is amazing. Um, but once you, you get up there into five, six, seven, 10 Airbnbs, I think that's when you see the growth, um, you know, with, with not only financially, but also with the relationships as well. Okay, 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 okay. I'm taking a little, some little notes, little notes. I might start me an Airbnb, start me one since I'm in college right now, because y'all talking that, that good talk right now. <laughs> okay, so Miss Smiley, Miss Smiley, so do you remember a specific experience of where you wish that you've done something differently or if you were to ever do it again, would you change it? Yes. So um, when it comes to Airbnbs, I'm noticing that the way you find the highest profit margins are to own your um your facilities instead of renting them from apartment mm -hmm. complexes and it's less red tape it's less rules you have to go through so it's less overhead um higher profit margins and like i said you just have more control so once i start to grow my business even more um and because i'm a real estate agent i have firsthand access to apartment buildings where i can go in and renovate the entire apartment complex um, not like a hundred unit apartment complex, more like a four unit or a six unit or an eight unit apartment complex 
renovate them one at a time and then turn them into Airbnb. So that is what I want to do going forward um, instead of like um, renting from an apartment complex. Some of the cons to that is, I'm not going to lie, people really enjoy the amenities that comes with the apartment complex. They enjoy the pool and the fitness center and the lounge areas and the, the security and the safety that does come with having um, staying in an apartment complex. But um, just to take this to the next level, I think what I would do differently is just to start focusing on ownership um, of these properties and not just renting them out. And I do want to say something. I want to piggyback on what Dom said about your ratings. Um, for one of my units, I had all five-star ratings for about every single person gave me a five-star. And then I had one person who gave me like a one or a two. And literally they were mad because I don't even want to get into the details about why they're mad. But just know I provide excellent customer service. They wanted to be mad. And so they gave me a bad review. And to this day, I have not recovered from that review. I would, I probably would never, ever have a five-star rating because of this one person who went, decided to just, you know, wanted to give me a bad score because they were unhappy with stuff that had nothing to do with me. So uh, saying that to say hospitality and the way you treat these people and, you know, go out of your way. If you're going to get into this business, make sure you're in the business of satisfying and pleasing other people um, that are coming to patronize your business. But yeah. That's all. And, and to that point, you may have to take that listing down and and, and maybe just start over fresh. Start over fresh if, if you're still seeing, you know, um, you know, that impact from that review. It's, um, well, I was I was upset about the score because I was just so proud of my five, but it's it's the four point eight, like four point eight three. So it's going up back to like four point. I'm okay. I'm okay. Hey, you're fine. I just wanted to let you guys know how bad one rating can just like impact your score so we mr hicks we got some talking to do i might have to get that i was just about to go off mute and say we, we should talk after this <laughs> get that one removed wow, wow, wow. Wow. so my next two questions for the panelists here will be what sparked the popularity of airbnb and do you think it will pop do you think it will positively affect black wealth emphasis on black wealth you know, I'll, I'll start out, you know, what, here, here's my answer to that. I think first, uh, in terms of the popularity of Airbnb, um, I mean, these stories here and, you know, Portia and Dom are examples, right? Um, you know, this idea and the, the, the whole concept around Airbnb from what I've seen is um, the idea of really challenging and democratizing this idea of travel and tourism. If you think back even 100 years ago, like there's only a few families or companies that own hotels, right? Like, and so now, now there's a you know, level playing field. Everybody can get in. And so Porsche and Dom, as an example, represent you know, the Black experience of being able to drive economic power and be entrepreneurial. So I think, yes, the popularity um, has just risen because people see and the light has come on that, wow, I can do this. I can open up my home or buy places uh, uh, and rent them out on Airbnb. And I think it's incredibly important in our communities that, uh, that this happens in, and it is happening on Airbnb. And that's what makes me proud inside the company, quite frankly. I can jump in. Oh, go ahead, Don. So I was just going to add that, you know, I, I think uh, one of the most attractive pieces to the black community um, in regards to Airbnb is, hey, you can get started into real estate and not own any property. Right. Um, you can get started and build up to ownership, um, build up to commercial real estate, uh, build up to just owning, um, you know, real estate in general. So I think, um, you know. With this whole platform being um, so flexible um, and just being just very, very flexible to approach owners and actually rent out their units um, until you generate enough passive income and enough cash flow to actually develop ownership in your own portfolio. I think that, you know, that's definitely going to drive the black dollar um, in our community. And just to add to that, um, how did Airbnb get so popular? I mean, it's like 
cryptocurrency. Once somebody starts talking about it, then all of a sudden everybody's talking about it. Um, and that's just how we are, especially with social media. Um, I, I, I say, I want to say social media is the reason Airbnb is so popular. But um, to everyone's point, when it comes to Black wealth, Airbnb has the lowest barrier of entry. Like Mr. Hicks said, you could possibly be somewhat of a hotel owner by just starting, like Mr. Walker said, starting with one Airbnb, gen generating more and more and more and more capital to just do what I want to do and purchase a small com um, apartment complex. If that's not Black wealth, then nothing is. And like I said, anybody can do it. Everyone has access to a property, whether it's your mom's you have a way to open up an Airbnb. You just have to use Clark's motto and find a way to make one. You know, like I said, very, very low barrier of entry and um, start here. Start here. If you don't know where to start, you joined this um, panel today for a reason. And if you were looking for a reason to start, here's your reason. Start now. No barriers of entry. Um, it's, it's for everyone, honestly. I hope you guys are taking great notes. Um, free gems, free gems, emphasis, free gems. So make sure you guys are taking advantage of that. So I know you guys are asking questions in the chat, but we have come to the point where we have our closing question. I know, I know. So our last and final question for our three panelists today will be, what is one piece of practical advice you would give to someone starting out? Me as a 19 year old, what is one advice that you would give somebody my age or someone older than me advice on making this, this, this dream a, a reality? My advice would be um, don't overthink it. Stop overthinking it. Stop writing it down. Stop planning it out and just do it. There are more than enough resources out there to figure out what you need to do. My friends have books available. I can post them in the chat after we're done. Um, YouTube. Um, I haven't, I've seen a million people talking about ways to start Airbnb. And my advice is to just do it. Don't overthink it. Just do it. Figure it out along the way. Awesome. Uh, great advice there. Uh, you know, just to connect off off of what Portia stated, I, I think just getting out there and believing in yourself. You know, a lot of times we're hesitant. Uh, we don't want to take that leap of faith, but definitely getting out there and doing it. Um, but the, the most important piece in this step is, you know, hey, you know, real estate, you know, can be expensive, whether you're Airbnb or whether you're owning. And I think formulating that budget and really breaking down, hey, what are your expenses to, to get this started, right? Um, you know, hey, I know we, we, we want to be very, very, very aggressive and excited to get into Airbnb, but do you have six months of reserves to actually get this listing up and running? Um, do you have the budget to actually fund the decor? Um, you want to map that out because at the end of the day, um, we're not here just to to pay other people's bills, right? We're here to actually make some some strong positive cash flow. Um, we're here to make a profit. So aligning that budget and making sure you stick to it is is key. You know, I, you know, I'll just echo everything that was just said um, and just close it out by just saying, you know, it really is my encouragement to you all is just to do it, just to step out there. Um, if we borrow uh, what I think we've all been taught at CAU, you find a way to make one. I still tell my teams here today um, that same motto. Stepping out there, step out on faith and just make it happen. I can go and tell you countless stories of tech uh, unicorns that are out here uh, and the ones that are mid-majors. And all the difference between them and those in, who, who are not the unicorns or people that just believe in themselves and stepped out there. It really is that simple. Find the, find the, the fit, find the problem, to solve the thing that you're passionate about. I hope it's Airbnb. Uh, but whatever it is, uh, find that out. Don't overthink it and just step out there and do it. Well, there you have it, folks. Hope you guys took some notes. If you didn't, you missed out. Sorry. Well, this video will be replayed back on YouTube. So I now will hand 
the program back over to Dr. Saller and Ms. Parker as they give us, us some closing remarks. Wow, that's all I can say. Same like you, Anthony, just wow. I, I'm, my head was down, I'm taking all kinds of notes. I had no thoughts of, of doing an Airbnb, but I'm feeling a little bit differently after this conversation. Just a couple of nuggets that I grabbed, relationships, passive income, and don't wait, buy real estate. I mean, those are, those are my key takeaways. And that everyone who joined us tonight, that you have your list of key takeaways from this courageous conversation, this bold conversation. So thank you, thank you for that. I have to thank, and I know we're right at seven o'clock, we're right at our hour time. So I'm gonna be really, really quick, but I have to thank um, Anthony Mitchell, our super host, for this evening. Thank you, Portia, for the definition of a super host, but I'm just gonna put a little spin on it for tonight. We had a super host right here. And I just wanna say, Anthony, you did an amazing job. This is a type of talent, not only that we produce at CAU and our alumni panel, but what's happening here right now at CAU. So thank you, Anthony. I have to thank our panelists, Portia, Dom, Donald. Wow, just, for the information that you shared, I think somebody put in the chat, priceless. That's probably the best descriptor, priceless. Thank you for that. And I hope that um, you have the opportunity to put some of your listings in the chat. I did see someone actually request that. So please, while I'm wrapping up, if you could put some of your listings or how you know everyone can reach you, um, please, please put that in the chat. Um, I, ha I would be remiss if I did not take this opportunity to thank, thank my team in alumni relations and engagement, Ms. Hill, Ms. Ricks, and a special huge thank you to Ms. Natalie Parker um, for your vision, for your continued excellence, for what you do every, every day in the implementation of this is just awesome. Thank you, Ms. Parker. I also have to acknowledge faculty and staff I saw show up um, who are here tonight. And I hesitate to do this to name names because then I'm going to miss someone. But I did see uh, Dr. Yadoka, Dean of the School of Business. I saw him pop in. Um, Devin White, president of CAUAA. And I know Devin said, please make sure that everyone who is on who's an alum um, be active, engaged, and connected to your local uh, uh, CAU alumni chapter. Please, please do that for Devin, and hopefully Devin's still on so he can hear me pushing that. And then to all of our participant who, participants who joined us this evening, thank you for your support. Thank you for being with us. Um, thank you for engaging. Please, if you would, just put your comments in the chat put um, the nuggets that you took away in the chat. And I did see someone say, Lori, this is great, but you should allow the, the uh, participants to ask questions. So I don't know if that's, you know, round two of this discussion. I don't know, Natalie, I'm just putting that out there and on your radar, that might be something that we need to consider. And I hope if our panelists um, would uh, indulge us in that way, we wanna make sure that we are sharing this information. This is hot, this is great. Um, that's all I had. Just thank you, everyone. And um, we look forward to our next conversation. And um, we will be sure to notify everyone of what the next topic will be. Thank you all. Good night. <laughs>